Hello there. This is Palm Beach, Africa. My name is John Matabam. Being the 16th of June 2020, we'll be joined by Mashelo Oko, who is a consultant in hydroponics. And obviously, we'll be discussing about the role of hydroponics in promoting food security in the country. Stay with us. Okay, my names are uh, Marshall Nyagilo, and uh, I am a hydroponics and horticulture consultant. Yes. So basically, what I do as a consultant is that uh, I do give people information on hydroponics, what they, which is the best structure they can install, and how they can manage crops within their hydroponics unit. Yeah. Then, uh, as a horticulture agronomist, because now the other side of agronomy is open field farming, I do manage consultancies for clients, generally farmers. They do call me for information on how do we raise this crop to the best, you know. For instance, melons, tomatoes, in respect to environmental challenges like pests and also technical challenges like nutrition of the crop. And uh, I also train... I do online training on how you manage your hydroponics crops in an hydroponic unit in terms of nutrition, yeah. pest, pest and disease management yeah. too. So that one I do training online, courtesy yeah. of the Africa Association for Vertical Farming. So hydroponics is like a backup plan for open field farming to ensure Yes, we are producing in open field farming, mm. but what happens when, for instance, we have uh, these natural disasters like too much rain or too much drought? Yeah, the locust as well. Exactly. The locust as well, you know? Yeah. What happens when such a, a, a disaster comes in? Now, the hydroponics guy, mm. he, he's, he's, uh, he's protected. Locusts can't access a hydroponics unit. That's okay. one. Mm. Then... Too much drought. You know, yeah. you find there are areas whereby they have uh, boreholes drilled. Mm. But you know, the borehole cannot get to the local open field farmer. Yeah. It cannot. But you can connect your watering system whereby you have your tank, you access water from a borehole. Mm. Then it enters your hydroponics unit, for instance, if it's the drip water system. Mm. You know how drips work? Yeah. They tend to use little as much as possible, but maximizes on the crop's health and uh, physiological properties. Yes. 90%. So generally, hydroponics is the backup plan for ensuring Africa as yeah. a whole is food secure. Yeah. Then what makes hydroponics even more interesting is that <laughs> currently you see people are talking about health and uh, lack of traceability of food, yeah. of food source. Yeah. Because John will tell me, yeah, I did not use any pesticides at all. Yeah. I was doing it uh, organically. But can you trace it, John? No. You can't trace it because it's coming all over. Yeah. But you know the hydroponics farming, if Marshall is the one specialized in, for instance, lettuce in yeah. uh, Machakos County. Yes. You can trace back to Marshall and tell him there is something suspicious in your, in your vegetables. Mm. And how can we solve it? Or how can we mitigate this challenge I've seen in your vegetables? You get it? Yeah. So it's also putting the consumer at a healthy side of life. Yes. That is one. Yeah. Because he can trace back. Yeah. Two, hydroponics, you know, we don't use pesticides in the hydroponic units. We, we are, don't use at all, at we all. We don't use. Mm. We are doing biopesticides. You know, biopesticides, from my own experience, because on the field, mm -hmm. they are crops, John, yes. natural, organic, uh, let me say, plants, mm. which have a very, very excellent attributes for repelling insects mm. or even mitigating the spread of a fungal or, a, let me say, fungal diseases majorly. Mm. Now, these are the sectors we are exploring. We are tapping into nature. Yes. Then, reasoning with nature. Mm. to help mitigate a problem. That is now hydroponics. So the baseline of hydroponics, mm -hmm. in our own perspective as Africa Association for Vertical Farming, yeah. we are innovating it because one of the main roles of this thing is promoting innovative minds in the youth. Mm. 
The more innovations come in, the more the youth get in, the more they are absorbed into the technology, the more even employment opportunities will come, will come in. Yeah. That's one of the main roles. Mm-hmm. The second role of this, this hydroponic system mm-hmm. is a backup plan, as I suggested earlier. Mm. What happens when the locals have ravaged the crop fields? For instance, now we are, we are in a big trouble due, due to the pandemic. We are not moving. Yeah. We can't move across counties. Yeah. And not so many people are farming. Yeah. Because cash flow has been an issue. Financing is another issue. True. So the sectors which are having hydroponic systems that had, had already been established mm. are moving on. They are the ones currently feeding the urban centers. Yeah. Because the hydroponic system, you can design it in the urban center. Yeah. You don't need soil. Yes. You need a space, 25 by 10. You design a hydroponics unit, you can feed the estate. Extremely overpopulated, but they are not food insecure. Yes, they might be ahead of us in terms of years and uh, development, but what is the unique key to China exporting food to Africa? So I'll tell farmers who are willing to and interested in hydroponics something that this is the next sector that is going to judge food security in Africa. And it's the next sector that will even employ more than you anticipate in the agricultural industry. Why? Check our major universities in Kenya. None currently is offering an advanced training course in hydroponics. Have you checked on that? True, there is none. There is none. And check on Africa. There is none. And imagine this is the next technique that is going to help us curb global warming and climate change. Mm-hmm. So I'll invite farmers. Yeah. Get into the training. Be patient. Organize yourself. Mm-hmm. This is a booming business you can do yourself. Yeah. It's a business that can sustain once you get the right things in the right way. It will work.